when we're debugging, most people seem to have syntax errors, which is good. Uh, obviously, you know, we want no errors, but it's good to have syntax errors because then it tells you, go check out this line. And I misspelled console, or I misspelled index of, or whatever. That's good. The ones that are hardest to figure out could be the, the logic ones. And um, some troubleshooting tips on that. For example, you press a button and nothing happens. Uh, a couple of ways to troubleshoot that is, well, you kind of work backwards. I press a button, so I assume something happens. I've got a whole area where I've got my event listeners on the event of a submit, on the event of a click. If I'm pressing a button and it doesn't do what I want, one of the first things I would check is, let me go check that I set up my spots where I make my buttons work, or I misspelled submit, or I didn't put the event, or whatever. So OK, if that isn't quite uh, solving it, what I'm seeing there, uh, I would work backwards. I'm trying to run this function after I press this button, so I would jump back. I would go look at my function, maybe scan it a little bit, and I see, oh, there's something misspelled. Sometimes you have to go back in the other direction in terms of, well, this form should be submitted to run that function. Maybe not the problem. Maybe the problem isn't forward over here where the functions are. Maybe the problem is backwards over here where the form was. So you could go backwards to say, OK, this, this form comes from all the way at the top where I created these variables right here. And I'm supposed to be creating this. I'm supposed to be creating this. Um, I'm supposed to be creating this form from an from an object with an ID, and I'm looking and I'm looking and looking. Oh, it's not an ID. I didn't put the pound sign. That's not a syntax error. That's a logic error. Obviously, it has to be a pound sign, but syntactically, it's not wrong. Just like I can use a dot, which means a class. Not having anything means a tag. There's no such HTML tag as form save comic, but there are XML tags which I can invent to be anything. So that's not a that's not a syntax error, it's a logic error. And that's what I'm saying about sometimes from the starting point of the error or the or the, the part of the problem, go forward to see if your functions and such are set up properly. Sometimes go backwards from that point. how did I get to this point here? What's my previous function or command? But um, we've got it working at this point. Um, so OK, let's go back to our save comic function save comic. This, this function hasn't really done much at all. We've got a big old comment. And we've got the prevent default. And we're starting to say over here, OK, a comic that we will save comes from, let's go prepare a comic. And what's cool here is that when you hover over this stuff, we invented function prep comic, but it can still tell you. Well, this is going to be made out of an ID, a title, a year, publisher, and notes. That's cool. Not just the built-in commands does it help you with, but even what you invent, Visual Studio is smart enough oftentimes to kind of show you how it works. It shows you how it works. After this console log, what we're going to then finally do is to save it into the database. Now we can save our comic to pouch nearly every pouch db command has this syntax which is db dot something parentheses options and then function. db dot something. db dot put. db dot get. db dot remove. We're going to see that sort of syntax over and over. The name of your database dot something. And in the parentheses of that method, we often have some sort of option. For example, what are we putting into the database? What are we retrieving from the database? And as a result, there's often a callback function. So I guess more accurately here, callback function. Some function that runs after trying to put or get or remove. In our case, db dot put. 
I'm going to save something to the database. The something is our first option here, which is a comic. A comic is an object that has an ID, a title, a year, a publisher, notes at the moment, which comes from running prep, which we've all confirmed that works. Comma. So what comes next is the, is the callback function. The either, everything we do in Pouch is either going to be successful or it's going to fail. So that's easy. You have two possibilities. Either you successfully save to the database or not. Either you try to retrieve the data or not. So we'll have here a, an anonymous function, open close parentheses, open close curly brace. In the parentheses, automatically, we get a failure, comma, or a success. Technically, these two names of these objects can be anything you want. But when I teach this, and the documentation at PouchDB is, is pretty much in line with this, although you can tell multiple people wrote the documentation because sometimes these change. Sometimes people put ERR for error and, and then result here. So these two things can be named anything you want. They can be named, you know, cat for good, dog for bad, I guess. And um, you can have, okay, then good, bad, whatever you want. So you're always going to get in the order, um, I had it backwards, uh, failure and success. So we might as well call it failure and success. You're going to get back a result or an object that is either a failure or a success, always with 99% of every pouch command. There's like one or two that don't have failure or success. So then you could do here an example. Let's copy that if you want. So I'm trying, with my database, I'm trying to do a, a method, an operation, a command of put. What I'm putting is a comic, which has already been bundled up and prepared and everything. After trying to put it in, something will happen, either a failure or success. In these curly braces, then, we deal with the failure or the success. Because let's say it was a failure to put it into the database. Then I would want a pop-up to say, something went wrong, please call the administrator. You know, I want something to happen in the, in the case of a failure. It's sort of like a built-in if-else. It's sort of like a built-in conditional statement it returns a failure object or a success object automatically. If there's a success, then I want to deal with that. For example, pop up to say comic was saved, or play a sound, or something. So because we often have more than one thing happening here, it's good practice to break that into multiple lines. Note to ourselves that this is end of dot put. And here we need to deal with, okay, was it a failure or was it a success? It's got to be one or the other. Conditional statement. Conditional state meant to deal with failure versus success. If curly braces, parentheses, curly braces, else, curly braces, this is the end of if, else. Trying to put into pouch. So this if else is inside of the curly braces of the anonymous function after attempting to put data into the database.
if failure exists. If it returns to us automatically a failure, we do something about the failure. Or else what it returned was success, so we deal with success. Console. The comic was, or some error. So error trying to put comic versus console log saved comic. I'm going to say some message that will always be the same, but I want it to tell me what was that success or failure message. I want pouch itself uh, to give me the failure. failure message. Then test this. Well, before you do, remember view error list. Looks normal. You can test this. This new that we've added is db.put. This is now we put it into the hands of the pouch db.js file. This dot put only works when you've got your pouch db connection. This will then try to save it, and then we can start to look. In, in our inspector, in our database inspector in Chrome to see now if stuff is being saved into our, our pouch database in Chrome in the device. So I'm going to save it and run it. Open up the console. I'm gonna go save a comic. The bat number one from bat comics. First issue. Save. All the usual stuff happens. Here's some new stuff. Saved comic. I can confirm that by looking at the application screen. In the application screen, remember, our database is being saved into index DB portion of memory. Inside of index DB, I've got a pouch database with the name of the user that is currently logged in. If I open that up and view my data by sequence, my first entry into the database is the JSON data I just input. When I open that up, then it alphabetizes, which doesn't matter, but it's alphabetical. Notes, there's the note that I wrote. There's the publisher, the title, the year. The ID is right there. Remember it was the bat. So it only took bat, it removed the, and then it put the year, 1999, and then it put the number. So the unique ID for this comic is bat, 1999-1, with a unique revision number that it invents, which will be useful a little later. Question, Mauricio? Um, no, 
Okay, I'll check your error in one moment. Let me just test this a little bit more. Let's say I save another comic. The Batwoman number two from 2001. DC Comics. I'll put no note this time. Save. If I look at the application, I might have to refresh here. If your data doesn't update right away in the database, you might refresh it here. Not up here. That's going to refresh the whole app. There's a refresh button right here in the database viewer. I've got two things in my database now. The zero with item, the first item, key one, key two. The second thing I've added is here. Notes was nothing. I didn't type anything to the notes. Publisher I did, title I did, year. So then the unique ID is Batwoman 2001 number two. Okay, let's say I have a comic called Incredible Inedible Hulk number one. 2018. I won't put a publisher, I won't put notes. Save. Well, first of all, my console is not going to detect. This is a multi-word title. It does not have the the or the uh or anything. And when I look at it in my app viewer, by sequence, third item, it's saving it with an idea of inedible space Hulk 2001 or 2018 one. So it's then saving comics with a unique ID based on the year, based on the title, including spaces. That's something I want to remove in a moment. And I accounted for that, but I'll make a note here. Remove spaces. We'll do that in a moment. But this is, again, OK, the, this is an example. The computers are dumb. It'll do whatever we want. Oftentimes, unfortunately, spaces cause problems in our data. So we will have to deal with this. I have an answer for it. I have an answer for it, of course. But as you are working on this on your own, you're going to need to beta test it. You're going to need to alpha test it. You're going to need to try this, try that, because as hard as we try, we, you know, there's nothing that is foolproof because there's so many ingenious fools. And so one of the things here is I don't want spaces, but people will obviously type in the space of a, the title of the comic. There must be a way for us to remove the space. There is, of course, and we will do it. That's what, those are the things that we figure out as we test this. So I didn't expect that. I didn't think about this. I'm going to test it how I think it'll work. Then I'll get someone else to help me test it that doesn't know how it works at all. I'll observe them, and I figured out another issue, another problem. Let's see here. I'm not using the or a uh or anything of that of mice and mutants. Number 129 from 1979 with Marvel Comics. Last issue. Save that. My console will say uh, didn't detect. It said that the first word is of, but it's not any of the words in our ignore list. So it's going to save the comic. It saved the comic. And then in my app viewer, refresh, I've got my fourth comic of space mice, space and mutants. I want to remove those spaces. That could cause problems when I try to read the data later. Problems in terms of it's reading the string of data, it gets to a space, and sometimes spaces, sometimes the, the program thinks a space is an end of data. So we want to remove spaces, or maybe hyphens, or any of those extra characters. Question. There is a way to limit the amount of characters. In HTML, when we create our form, there, there are attributes that you can add to an input field to limit it, built in. Yeah, that, that could definitely happen. You're, you're, you're thinking ahead. Good, in that 
Do we want to put a limit to how much we take in here? Do we want it to detect apostrophes and all of that? Do we want it to do this? Alert, help me. Is that going to run like JavaScript? So here's all of these things. This, this is one of the ways apps and, and websites get hacked. These input fields are not strengthened to eliminate code. And then the code gets put into the database and it runs and it deletes something or it gives a user access. Here I am deliberately writing something huge and weird in the title and at the moment it'll, it'll allow it because we didn't set up for any more. Uh, we didn't set up for any more extra checking. So yeah, we're about to save a comic called It Was the Best of Times, It Was the Worst of Times, and It Wasn't Alert. So it will save that, and it did save that. So looking at my data, refreshing it, I've got a comic book with that title right there. It took it, and the ID is this huge thing that I can't even see on my screen anymore. So yes, sanitizing our data, preparing our data is one of the most important things to do, because this again, I know what people should type, the name of a comic. Right now it's open to type anything. I can even type emoji in here. Uh, I don't know any emoji off the top of my head, but it's like, I don't know, dollar pound, one eight nine one semicolon. That's some emoji right there. And maybe the name of the comic is an emoji, and maybe I don't want it saved, and maybe it'll process weird, and all of that. So those are things to, to consider that we will get to. But at the least, you should be seeing that we are saving stuff. I'm going to try to save the bat number two, 1999. I already have the bat number one. I click Save to the bat number two, and it saved it right there. As you further test this, what if I try to save the bat number one again? Error, trying to put the comic. Conflict. There's already a um, comic called The Bat Number One from 1999. We, of course, will program it to deal with that. Right now, all it does is gives an error in the console, not to the user. We will deal with that. What if a person is trying to save the exact same comic? It'll pop up to tell them, you already have that comic. So that, that's some of the stuff that we have to do for the user. Um, but at this point, we're we're pretty far along pretty well. We'll do a little help in just a moment at 9. Uh, let me do a couple more things here. Go back to the JS file. Say that again. This is just a Boolean, yes. Um, if it's true that we got the failure object, we do the first part. Or else it was false that we got the failure, so we do else. Is this is also failure to Up here, no. This is pouch DB specification returning a failure object or a success object, not not a Boolean. These are objects that have data in them. But the FC does a Boolean? But this is doing a Boolean uh, conditional operation. It's checking true or false. Because we didn't do if failure equals true. That's basically what's happening there. Um, well, technically, uh, failure, uh, I forgot exactly what it is. But we're doing it super simply, that, it, that we're doing it as a Boolean. Um, the, did that object, is that the object that Pouch returned to us, yes or no? Was it a failure? No, then it was a success. What we can do here under else, we've got a pop-up. We've got a pop-up that we created in the HTML file to display on screen that the comic got saved. In the 
index.html, we created a pop-up with an ID of pop comic saved that gives some feedback to the user, comic was saved. So under the else here, we'll make that pop-up happen. Quick and dirty jQuery selector to make a pop-up happen. I'll explain why it's quick and dirty in a moment. To make a pop-up happen. Remember we saw something like this where we had dot pop-up, and then we had dot pop-up open. Remember this when we had user does not exist. When we were trying to create an account, user does not exist, we had a pop-up happen. It looks very close to this. It's slightly different. I'll explain why it's different in a moment. But we had to initialize, we had to prepare the div to behave like a pop-up. And then we made the div actually pop-up open. And then we can have some options about the animation of it. So comma, curly braces. Hey, curly braces with quotes and such. This is in JSON format. We did it before. I didn't point it out at that point. But now that we've had some experience with JSON, JSON format, yeah, this that we had done before with jQuery Mobile to input some options is in JSON format. Curly braces, the first the field in quotes of transition, the colon, and the value of slide up. We're going to open this pop up, it's going to slide up into view. Well, the reason I'm saying this is quick and dirty is because we have up until this point been creating objects of everything that we deal with in the HTML. We can do a shortcut to reference the, the, the ID of the object in HTML directly. So comparing that, right here, previously when we did our error signup mismatch, when we, when we didn't have a password matched up, we did it this way in dollar L. We had the object already defined, and then we initialized it as a pop-up, and then we opened it. So this one required the extra effort of having the having us created the object up here. We created the JavaScript object using the jQuery selector, stored it there. Um, and then we used it here. Well, this quick way that I'm talking about is we could, to be completely consistent, do the same thing in terms of creating the object and then making it pop up. The quick and dirty way is that we can reference it with the jQuery selector directly and then make it pop up. We could have done that with the other one too. I wanted to show the long way, the difficult way to do it first, and then a shortcut. Now you might have noticed that when we saved the comic successfully, we get console output that happens but not for the user. Now we get something for the user. You may have noticed also the form is still filled in. So if the person tries to click Save again, it'll try to save the exact same comic. We want to clear the form, like when we set ourselves up for creating the user and such. They created the user, they put, they put their name, 
their email, the password, clear the form so that they don't try to create the same account again. So we need to reset that form. We have that defined as L form save comic brackets zero dot reset method. We can refer to the ID directly with the jQuery selector, right, the dollar symbol parentheses. We can refer to the ID directly instead of first creating an object as we've usually done. And then after that, after saving comic, clear the form. Well, one of the good things about Visual Studio is that the error list, because that will tell you in which file the error is happening. The communication happens uh, when we've got the index.html. Remember, at the end of index.html, we've got the link to all of the other files. So index is connecting to the pouch file. It's connecting to this index file we're working on right now. It's <coughs> connecting to the jQuery file. So the index file basically is connecting to everything. And that needs to, that needs to happen. And that's sort of how the communication happens, because the main index is like the tree trunk, and then the branches are the jQuery, the jQuery mobile, the pouch, the Cordova, everything. My other question is, so I can have all these patches of files all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. And some of them are working and some of them are not. And now I'm trying to compile them all together so that they can make the sense that you are writing this to me, because mm -hmm. I'm way behind. So uh, is it possible to move the, the good files from one place to another place and make a whole, uh, a whole file that is working together? A whole project that is working together? Yeah, as long as it's all in the structure that I'm showing here, if you've got files in different folders and all of that, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Everything should be in one project folder, and as long as it's in, you know, all your JavaScript is in the JavaScript folder, all the CSS is in the CSS folder, images in images folder. If you've got that sort of basic structure but all in one folder, it should work. So here, okay, so we're still dealing with put because uh, what could happen is we get a failure or a success. And like most pouch commands, there's going to be often a failure or a success. We dealt with success, which is make a pop-up, reset the form. It's done. We saved the data. Well, failure could be a few possibilities. What kind of failure? 
when I when I showed the example of the failure of um, I'm trying to save the exact same comic. That's one possible failure that Pouch can detect. There are other failures as well. Like for example, the database got corrupted. It'll give you a message that that happened. Um, what could happen is also you're trying to save a comic without an underscore ID. We've built our app well enough at the moment that that should never happen because we've bundled a comic it has an ID we, we've made sure we've created an ID but omitting or forgetting to add an underscore ID could be another kind of an error so inside of this failure portion of the if else this could be another part to have a conditional statement to deal with the possible failure errors that could happen and depending on the possible error then offer some sort of solution. So let's deal with that. In the if portion of failure, we'll say conditional statement to deal with which failure message. We have the if else conditional, which is two possibilities. We've seen switch before, which could be the possibilities of a uh, or the or l. Um, where we can use either or, but I like the switch here because also it, it kind of makes sense, like the um, prep data. So we'll do switch. That's got some curly braces and switch checking which failure message So what we're checking here in switch is failure dot status. Over at the PouchDB website, there's a screen that lists all the possible failures that can happen with everything in pouch and the the failure error number is stored in the failure object in the status property failure has a few properties it has a, a, a status I believe it has a message it has other ones it has some built-in properties. Failure is an object that pouch returns, and it's got a status property. So we're saying here, let's check what is the status number that we're getting back. Once we know that, we can have different cases to deal with, with each error. We've got a case of 409. Something will happen here, and then break. We've got a case of 412. Something will happen here. We've got a case of 413. Something else will happen. And then there's of course the possibility I didn't I didn't account for all errors. Uh, what's the final possibility in a switch statement? Default. Case 409 deals with um, the possibility of um, 
you're, you're trying to use the same ID a second time. Let's say ID already in use. So that'd be like say, saving Batman number one, 1940 again. Because there's already an entry in the database with that exact criteria. If we have Batman number 1990, that will not be a conflict because it has 1990 as part of the ID. There is the possibility of an error 412, which is that ID is empty. That really, we, we really should never be able to trigger this. We've already built up our app so much to the point at the moment that there must be an ID, even if it's a bunch of empty spaces. We still will deal with what do we deal with empty spaces a little later, um, but we should never be able to trigger this this possibility. Also, because the um, because the the field of title is required there's no way to submit the form with it with it empty it's got a requirement 413 is a uh, database corruption and those are pretty rare too And console log for default and say some unknown error. And we can we can output it into the console. Oh, it's error 499. I never even heard about that one. Let me go to the pouchdb.com and look it up. And then I'll create a brand new case for error 499 and deal with that. To make these things do something, we'll do it next time. But what I want to do here to test these things, try to save a comic with the exact same data as before. Make it super simple. Save comic A <coughs> from number one, year one. Just save like something super simple and try to save the exact same comic more than once. You should be able to trigger in your console error 409 if you're trying to save something with the exact same ID with the exact same data. Try to do a 412 that you shouldn't be able to because you've got your requirement in your in your uh, HTML. Now you can kind of play with that actually by you, you could I suppose to fully test that you can go back to your HTML and remove everything that's required because it won't let you try to even save because all of those fields have required. You could remove all of those three requires and then try to save and it'll let you save and maybe you'll hit an error 412 to fully test it. But you should be able to try to get the error 409 if you save the exact same thing. And these other ones, I don't know, break your database somehow and then try to get that error. And default, you probably won't be able to get that one either. But if it's able to save the comic, great. If it makes the pop-up happen, great. If you're then trying to make this error 409 happen, great. We'll do lab time in just a moment. But we're getting closer to doing these uh, saving to the database, retrieving the, from the database. Eventually, we're, oops, I misspelled the comic. It's Spider-Man, not Spider-Man. So I need to fix that. <coughs> Save to the database, retrieve from the database, edit the database, delete the database. We still have those operations. We'll do that. You come back and something could happen. Why it doesn't have that safety feature that you're able to save it, make sure that you haven't, like, by mistake, you know, pressing some little target or something? Um, 
I might not be explicitly saying it, but every time that I write code, I just do Control S to save. And you should always be hitting the, the save there, or save all. Uh, so you, you, you should be getting in the habit of every time you do something, you, you should save it. And I just do it kind of out of reflex. I do something and I save right away. Does it happen with all of them? Because I just take a file to try to get all my errors together. Mm -hmm. And I copy them into one of them. And then I deleted it. And I did not get the little red thing to, or maybe yet, maybe. Well, I might need to look at your particular case to see what's going on, but um, yeah, you should just, uh, it, I don't think there's an auto save, so you should be saving manually. Uh, second question over here, uh, Ali? We, uh, my bunch of status 500, we never put <laughs> anything 500 there, but okay. how does it? Well, it's going to go to default. Since we didn't put a 500, it'll go to default, and it'll say some unknown error, 500. So if we want to add 500, we add a brand new case. Does it say anything else about what 500 is, maybe? It's name indexed db <laughs> OK. <laughs> <coughs> there we go. So uh, I won't put it at the moment, but case 500 will then deal with the case 500, and then we'll have to read the pouch documentation. What happens when our database goes bad, and pouchdb.com will tell us how to fix it. But, okay, cool. You figured out another another error. Okay, so for the moment, uh, I'm going to end the lecture. I'm going to put my code up in the folder. Um, you should test it to make sure that it works up to this point. You should be able to save to the database. You should get that little pop-up happening. Try to get one of these error messages 409. Maybe try to get an error 500. And um, we'll then uh, come back on Tuesday and keep working at this, making all of these possible failures fully working, and then the other bits of the database.